Due to travel restrictions as the result of the spamdemic that's going on, not really able to travel as much as I would like or am used to, some of you seem to get a bit of a kick out of these little um, videos I do of visiting the market. So that's what this is. This is our local market. This is where we buy our fruits and vegetables and meat and fish and chicken and all sorts of things like that. And as I've stated before, basically all of the food is grown within a radius of about 20 miles from this exact location. So rather than going to a, uh, a supermarket that sells everything, we prefer to purchase from local merchants, such as this. This lady is selling uh, cho choclo, which of course is co corn. These are the ones that have uh, giant kernels. This is from Umai. Umai. It's from the little town of Umai, but traditionally this is the corn grown in the Sacred Valley of Peru. You see the giant size of the kernels, relatively. So it's the end of October. 2020, Peru has uh, become a, a bustling little country once again. So compared to places like Europe and other locations, other countries where there are extreme lockdowns, fortunately Peru is more or less wide open and Machu Picchu will reopen to the general public in a few days from now. All of the other archaeological sites in Peru are now open as of November or October the 15th. So now we're moving into the more of the main part of the um, Mercado, the market, covers many, many acres, several blocks. And this is where you see beans and peppers. Eggs and dried potatoes. And dog food and chicken food. And clothes. And rice grown in northern Peru. As well as fresh bread baked every day. This is actually called pan de agua, which means water bread. And you can basically only find it here in the area of Pisco, Peru. And of course, an abundance of uh, different other local products. Sweet potato, onions, other tubers, cucumbers, very strange looking little 
potato-like things, peppers, garlic, lemons, tomatoes, and all sorts of other things. That's the amazing thing. It's all, again, once again, it's all locally grown. It's such a small country. It has an incredible abundance of productivity. Much of that is thanks to the great Inca civilization, because they were specialists in agriculture in terms of producing hundreds of varieties of corn, some somewhere like 5,000 types of potatoes, and they shared that abundance as they expanded their civilization. And now in the fruit section, various kinds of bananas, mango, aguaymanto, I don't know what that is, plums, strawberries, weird looking fruit from the, the jungle I think of Peru, pineapple, apples, grenadilla which is that large orange fruit there, Coconut, watermelon, honeydew melon, big papayas, more types of um, bananas, and blueberries, lots of types of oranges. This area is known for its citrus. And peaches and pears and even more kinds of bananas in the background. So it's pretty amazing. All of this is grown in this area, probably even these bizarre bumpy fruits as well. So they could be from the Amazon, even kiwis. So just a view of market life here on the coast of Peru. We're hoping to begin to travel to more distant lands <clears throat> relatively soon, but for now I'm afraid this is what uh, this is what we have to offer. And even guys who could help you to transport your food if you need it. And of course thousands of these little three-wheel tuk-tuks, or locally some people call them taxi cholos, made in the Philippines and in India. And there are thousands upon thousands of them here in Pisco and also the neighboring cities of Paracas and Ica and Lima and beyond. So just a little insight into daily life on the coast of Peru in October 2020.